Hi, welcome back, and it's camera review time again, and we're going back in time for this one. Um, so what we have on uh, this video is this. So this is the Minolta D-Image 7i, which is a 5 megapixel, you might just be able to see it says it's a bit shiny, but 5 megapixel down there. It's a 5 megapixel bridge camera from 2002, so we are talking the early days of um, digital photography. It's an odd looking beast, even for its time, and I'll come on and talk more about that. Um, but what I basically want to do is just talk a bit about the camera and what it does and then run through the pros and cons of it that I found from using it for around about the last month or so and I've been carrying it around with me taking out and using it here and there and you know what I see as the plus points and the negative points for it. Um, okay so let's get started and first of all just talk a little bit about the camera itself. So what we've effectively got here is as I said a moment ago 5 megapixel C CCD sensor camera from 2002. It's got a seven times zoom on it, which uh, covers basically 28 mil through to 200 mil on 35 mil equivalent. Um, at the time, 28 mils was unusually wide uh, for a camera of this time. Most capped out at around about 35 to 38 mil. So this was quite. Um, unusual in the fact that it was a fairly wide angle lens on it. It's a reasonably fast lens that we'll come on to talk about a bit more um, in the pros and cons. Um, it's actually got a fair bit of metal in its construction. There is some plastic, but there's quite a bit of exposed metal. It's zinc alloy for the most part, I think, or something similar to that. Um, it has a pop-up flash just there. Um, a plethora of buttons and switches and dials on it and um, we will come back and talk about some of that as we go through it. Uh, in terms of memory cards it runs on a compact flash. You gonna focus on that? Ah uh, yeah there we go it runs on a compact flash which just pops in the grip there like that. You do have to be careful you don't catch the strap loop in there. That's a bit annoying. Uh, battery wise, the battery compartment is just here and it runs on double A's. Um, rechargeables, it accepts perfectly well and it's a snug fit for the battery cover there. I must confess the battery cover is actually plastic um, and it does slightly worry me um, in regard to that that it might not last but it's lasted 21 years, so I suppose it's actually better built than it looks. Um, this particular one, you will notice here, has taken a bit of a ding on the base. It's also got the rubber off of the viewfinder, or foam off of the viewfinder missing, but it's not the end of the world. Um, the grip, that might look rubberized, it's not. It's um, a weird kind of soft touch paint on there instead, so it is still very hard in that regard. Um, so, oh, yeah, the final thing I'll just point out, it, from a flash point of view, it uses Minolta's silly proprietary shoe mount that they used for a while, so that is a bit of an issue if you're going to use flash on it, but as I say, it does have a little pop-up flash, which is reasonable in there. Right, so that's the basics of the camera. <coughs> Let's talk a bit more about um, the pros and cons. So starting with the pros, and the first one I want to talk about is this lens. So it is, as mentioned, a 28 through to 200 mil lens. It's actually 2.8 to 3.5, so it's as near as damn it a fixed aperture lens. And you know, hitting 3.5 on the 200 mil lens, that's fairly quick still. So it's got a decently fast lens. You may also notice that oh, I'm having to twist there. No power zoom <coughs> on this at all. So you have to manually zoom, but it does give you indicators of exactly where you've got it set. 
It's also got a reasonable macro setting on there, which is engaged by a switch just here. Now, with the macro switch engaged, it does actually lock the zoom because it will only engage macro at either the widest 28 mil end or at around about 180 to 200. You've got a bit of variation on the longest end. Um, and it's not bad from a macro point of view. It's, it's certainly workable in that regard. But the main standout is there are some, there is some ED glass in this lens and it's really, really sharp. Um, given its age and the type of camera that it's attached to, it's, it really is very good. It's got great um, chromatic aberration control. There's not a huge amount of distortion in the lens itself, and what there is is easily corrected in post. Um, and yeah, it's just a nice sharp lens, very little vignetting, very little distortion, pretty much crisp right the way from corner to corner, not just in the centre. So the lens on it is, is a standout. It really is a nice little piece of glass that they've crammed into here. And that's across the focal range as well. It doesn't fall off a cliff when you get up to um, the 200 mil end either. So it's not just a decent performer, you know, at the kind of wide to 50 end um, and you get a lot of zooms that the second you get close to the extremes on the telephoto they fall apart not this one another nice thing is because it's so fast it's fairly big 49 mil lens filter screw on there and it is actually threaded so you can use filters on it which again really nice and a fairly standard size nothing too exotic so that's the first of the pros which is the lens itself. Now when it comes to the second of our pros, that's the sensor. So as I mentioned, this is a five megapixel CCD sensor. So a bit of an unusual one. It's got an ISO range of 100 through to 800. Um, will also run in auto, but auto just covers 100 to 200. So it is a little limiting in that regard. Um, but the actual colour rendition off of this sensor is stunning. It really, really is a nice sensor in here. Um, and when you combine that with the lens, you get some absolutely brilliant images off of it. You know, work that will stand up, that if you didn't tell people the age and the megapixel of the sensor it came from, I think a lot of people would struggle to actually guess, given the quality of some of the shots that it, it puts out. The main limiting factor in terms of what you can do isn't actually the sensor itself. It's the processing behind it and how long that can take to chug along. And I'll come back and talk about that a little bit later on. But overall, yeah, the sensor on this is absolutely cracking. And I know a lot of people, myself included, bang on about CCD sensors and how they're a bit special. And, you know, it, isn't it a shame that they, they've gone? But it, that there's a reason behind that. They do have something different about them, and hopefully that comes across in the shots that I'm putting out at the present moment. But, you know, this is technology that's long dead. We're not going to get it back. Um, you know, this caps out 800 ASA, and trust me, the 800 ASA is not good on this. Um, 400 is about as far as you want to go on that, and that makes it really quite limiting. But get some decent light out there, and you've got something that's capable of capturing some really good images. Our third pro is, uh, and I'm going to give it this one, I, re I really am going to give it this one, for when it came out in 2002, it, this thing packed an absurd amount of features into it. It really, really did. Um, you know, the automatic ISO is on there. It's got your full PASM range, so you can run it as a point and shoot, or you can actually um, take full manual control or aperture or shutter priority, whatever you want. It's got a good zoom.
zoom range on there with a wide angle end on it. It's got good macro facilities on there. It's got a decent range of features on there. It's actually got a workable and usable manual focus on it, controlled by a focusing ring. So that is your focusing ring, just there. So you can manually focus with it. And the, the manual focus on the LCD on the back and on the viewfinder is workable, it is usable, and it's even got a little button down the bottom here that when you're in manual focus mode, if you hit it, it gives you an enlarged view of it. Now, it's too old to have focus peeping. You're not getting any highlight illumination off the back of this, unfortunately, but that zoom in does give you enough to work on. And I've, I've used this quite successfully in terms of manual focus. And it's just a button on the side. You hit the button and bang, you can just take over with that ring there and manually focus or adjust the focus. And it works extremely well from that point of view. And you know, it's in a logical place. So, you know, that works really well. I, I like that on there. Um, it's got other things that I'll come on and talk to a bit more about this, but you know, our little viewfinder lifts up at 90 degrees, which is a really nice little touch in that regard. It's got a whole range of modes on there. It's got an automatic switch between the EVF and the rear LCD screen. Again, at the time, a lot of cameras, you had to do that manually. Now you can do that on here, but you can leave it on auto and it will switch between the two quite seamlessly. And the month that I've been using it, I whacked that in auto. I haven't felt a need ever to switch that off. So, you know, it's got an awful lot of features in here. One, it's got a button that completely lies about what it does. You'll notice that on the back there, it's got a little button labelled spot. That, that is actually a complete lie. It's got nothing to do with the spot metering. The camera does have spot metering, but it doesn't switch the spot metering on. So I don't know why it's called that. Now that, as you'd expect, is an exposure lock button. But you can go into the menus and you can actually switch that from exposure lock to focus activation and exposure. So what you've got on this 2002 camera is effectively <coughs> the ability to switch on a back focus button. So, you know, it's it's got a huge spec for its time. It really has. Um, and, you know, even 21 years later, picking it up and exploring all of this, I was still impressed 21 years later on the usability of the specification that they put on there. Because... It's got a lot in it for its time, and a lot that's still very usable. So it does work extremely well in that regard. And coming on to that viewfinder. So these are the very early days of electronic viewfinders, and they were quite rightly hated um, to a large degree with most people ignoring them and relying on the rear screen. Now one thing that this does that I really like because I really like it on my Lumix GX7 um, is the fact that it tilts up to 90 degrees so you know you're not just limited to that you can get down there and take a shot like that and that does make a difference it is a really nice usable feature the other thing that it does which is quite clever for its time i mean we're very used these days to evfs that perform absolutely brilliantly in low light conditions seeing stuff that our, our eyes wouldn't pick up and being able to use them in that regard now these early ones were appalling in that regard. They really didn't work well in low light at all, mainly because the sensors struggled. So what it actually does is once the light level drops below a certain point, it actually switches to black and white for the viewfinder. And it allows you to see an incredibly low light levels for the age of camera. And it's just a neat little trick. Your images still come out in color, but you're able to see in lower light in black and white through the viewfinder. And it's a neat little trick. And again, it switches seamlessly in that regard. So those are my pros for this camera. Looking at the cons next, 
Now the first con, unfortunately, is also one of the pros, and that's this viewfinder. Because for all of the neat things that it does, it is insanely low resolution, unfortunately. Um, and in addition to that, it's just not very good. Um, if you're looking at the center of it, and you've got that nice and sharp, and it's got a diopter adjuster on there so that you can make sure that is the case, that's absolutely fine. You can get that nice and sharp. If you just move your eye to try and look down the sides for where the information is, it's blurry to the point of being completely useless. And you actually have to move your eye around, sorry, your head around, so move the position of your eye rather than looking to be able to get that in focus. And it does really limit the use of the viewfinder. I still use it, but yet it slows you down and slows you down quite considerably because, you know, you can't just glance at whether the shutter speed's okay for the aperture you've got set, you know, and so on. You actually have to move your head to move your eye to be able to do it rather than just looking. Um, and as I say, it is a bit low resolution, so you're not gonna get accurate impressions of color or exposure off the back of it. And if we're being honest, the LCD on the back plate is not much better in that regard. I mean, it's deeply recessed, so it at least works reasonably well in bright light conditions, um, but that's when you'll use the EVF. But these kind of products of the time um, so yeah, that's my first con. It is a pro as well, but the viewfinder is is a bit of a um, <sighs> double-edged sword in that regard. Now moving on to my second um, con with this and this is perhaps the biggest one the the most frustrating thing about the camera as a whole and that is the ergonomics of it i have no idea what happened when they were designing this thing but it appears to have been done by a committee of 18 people who weren't allowed to talk to each other at all ever um, and it's a hideous mess i actually counted in terms of dials and switches and rotary type controls it has nine of them it has 11 separate buttons on it and a d-pad but the d-pad is just a d-pad it doesn't have any functions on the up, down, left, or right that you would expect that would reduce the button count. No, no. And some of it's just really, really, really odd. So for example, if you want to change something on this dial here, which has got the ISO, etc., on it, you have to set it to ISO. You then have to hold in this button. Oops, hang on, let me just switch it on to demonstrate this. So <coughs> you have to set it to ISO, hold in this button, look on the top screen, go to the front dial here, and then use that to control your ISO. If you then want to change anything else on there, like let's say we wanted to change um, to spot metering, we've then got to switch it all the way around to the spot metering one, press the button in again, and switch this dial. Okay, but if we wanted to change any of the filter effects on it, we have to go down here and do the same thing on that dial. And it's even got a completely separate dial on the back for switching between the EVF and a button in the middle that brings up info. It, it's just not well thought out from that point of view at all. And again, this just really slows you down. I mean, the, the focus peaking, sort of magnification button and the zoom in button for um, your quick view. It's, it's a completely different button, shape, form, look, feel, texture to any other button on the camera for no good reason. And don't get me started on this QV, quick view button here, which allows you to look at the last image you've displayed. And if you hit it, then attempts to delete it. Yes, the, the quick view and the delete button are the same button. It, it, ergonomically it makes no sense at all it really really doesn't it's just yeah and then as i've already pointed out this spot button that does nothing with spot metering you've then got oh your program modes is a button here rather than a dial that flicks between them and then you've got a button dedicated to putting it all back into program that's actually really easy to accidentally hit and then at least the shutter button i suppose is in a logical place um 
and then you've got the power and view button and uh, yeah it does have a movie mode on it you really 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 don't want to see what that's like it's horrible um, and as well as a menu button you've got a setup button but the setup button's on the rotary control whereas the menu button's a button on the back it's oh I haven't finished because the batteries are in the bottom here as well this itself causes two other additional problems one is that the um, tripod mount which at least is metal is off center and this camera because of the batteries is really really one-sided in terms of weight it really is so my thumb there is on the tripod location and as you can see yeah it's ergonomically a total and utter mess and it's a shame because it's a great camera that is to a large degree let down by that ergonomic mess oh and it i think it's a love it or hate it type look to it i mean it is very much a product of its era but yeah you get strange looks using it trust me okay the final con i have is Although the sensor does allow you to output anything from teeny weeny horrible useless JPEGs right the way up to full 5 meg TIFFs and RAW files, which is great, the processing in this, the actual brains behind it, makes the TIFF and the RAW files practically unusable. Um, because when you take a TIFF or a RAW file, it locks the camera up for around about 18 to 20 seconds and that's not an exaggeration i've actually checked this 18 to 20 seconds you cannot do anything else with the camera so as a result the tiff and the raw uh, files on it are practically useless in that regard you know i've talked about it it is a later camera but you know my my lumix lx1 just here you know that takes about three to four seconds maybe five seconds to write a raw file and that's annoying enough but this thing and i know it's you know that's got four years on this um in terms of newness but 18 to 20 seconds it, it makes it practically useless and it doesn't help that the raw files are just huge for what you get out of them and there's not enough of a difference in terms of what you can do with the largest of the JPEG files versus the raw files in terms of editing and your dynamic range and the amount you can pull back from the shadows and the highlights on it. So as a result, I tend to use it in large JPEG, you know, in the, in the super fine biggest JPEG, whatever it's called, I can't remember, um, rather than the TIFF and the raw, which makes their inclusion a, a little bit pointless. So that's the last of my cons behind it. In conclusion, um, would I recommend this camera? Well, I think I paid about 30 quid for it um, and I did specifically go oh I want that and bought it would I recommend that somebody go out and buy one in this day and age <sighs> unless you are somebody who knows a fair bit about what they're doing to get the most out of this and really has a hankering for an old school CCD sensor if that's you then yes this is worth picking up it is going to frustrate you when you use it but some of the results you get out of it you are really going to love and you're going to potentially find something special about the images you shoot with it if you're relatively new and you're looking for something that allows you to pick up a camera and use it from day one easily and get you know good results out of it in a wide range of conditions 
no, absolutely not. Do not go anywhere near this. There are better old cameras out there that are easier to use that you can pick up for a similar-ish sort of price. Um, you know, there are a lot of the Kodak and the Lumix um, and the Fuji bridge cameras that are smaller, lighter, easier to use and give you generally better results than this that were brought out a couple of years later and are not much difference in price. But if you are looking for something that is unusual that has an excellent piece of glass on it and a great sensor and you know what you're getting into yeah if you're a ccd freak and you want something that's a bit unusual um and and will give you some interesting results this is worth picking up for around about the 30 pound stroke dollars mark so yeah there we go that is the Minolta DMRG 7i a relic from the past uh, if you've enjoyed this video please do hit the like button and if you want to see more content like this please do subscribe to the channel and uh, hit the bell icon to be notified when new videos get uploaded thanks very much for watching everyone take care bye